Hi, everybody. I'm Lisa Plagmeyer, the Executive Director of the National Cybersecurity Alliance, and I'm joined today um, with Amira Dalla from Consumer Reports. Amira, can you introduce yourself, please? Hi, yes, great. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, my name is Amira Dalla, and I work as an Associate Director at Consumer Reports. Um, I am in charge of making sure that people are getting the right tools and tips to protect themselves online and our digital rights and privacy and ensuring that people feel that they are in a place of action to be able to mobilize and engage more people as they continue to learn. Consumer Reports is a longtime organization dedicated to research, ratings and reviews, and reports and news in order to protect people across the marketplace. That's great. You have a very similar mission to ours, so we're really thrilled that, that uh, you joined us today. So what has Consumer Reports learned about how the average person feels about data privacy? Well, there's a common myth that consumers don't care about their privacy. And in fact, research uh, around the world and our research has shown that people actually do care a lot about their privacy. Uh, nearly two thirds of individuals worry about their loss of privacy when they bring smart products uh, into their home. Um, the issue that we're finding is that very few of them actually believe that they have a lot of control in this. Uh, and that's where we're really digging deeper into and how do we give back control to individuals and make them feel that they are powerful uh, amongst the many tools and products that they are bringing into their homes. Uh, so we are seeing uh, consumer sentiment as it relates to privacy and data privacy and security just continuing to rise over the years. Um, consumer Reports is an annual survey and in 2020, we found that 96% of Americans agreed that more should be done to ensure that companies protect the privacy of consumers. Um, this includes asking and allowing for data upon request, having more data transparency in their privacy policies, not sharing their data with third parties and others. And so this is really important because consumers are wanting this data and info and are wanting more control over it. And they do rely upon the places and the services and the tools that they want to provide that. And what I find most telling from the research we've done at Consumer Reports is that we're seeing a lot of consumers have more openness and willingness to pay for these services um, that allow for more privacy online. And it's the reason we're seeing people switch, whether it's their browser or the products they're using um, and develop more brand affinity for these sorts of tools that do ensure and, and um, generally just say that they are gonna have better privacy for you. Uh, so we definitely know through our research that consumers are willing to pay more for better privacy in the marketplace, whether it is VPNs or security cameras, smart speakers or healthcare apps, all the tools that they're using, they are definitely able and willing to pay more if they have the resources. Yeah, even things like email. We're in my household, we're, we're going through the, the process of converting to a, a paid email service that um, protects your privacy. And I have to say, it's a little bit painful. Uh, consumers right. have to make that decision for themselves. It's always a trade-off between your convenience and privacy and security. There's always going to be a, a little bit of work you have to do or maybe a few dollars that you have to spend. But as you said, consumers are, are more and more willing to do that because they realize that free isn't free, that you're the product and uh, your, your data is worth something. So you're actually paying with your, with your privacy or with your personal data, if you will. 